I have had this video idea in my head for at least six months. I saw somebody interview Adam Savage about the things he keeps in his pockets. And as silly as it sounds, what's in people's pockets is a hobby of mine. Now, they call it everyday carry and I'm on the like Reddit subreddit looking at attractive professional photos of the crap that people have in their pockets. Mine's evolved for a little while, but it stabilized a bit. And I thought I'd show you my stuff. I should mention, None of this stuff is sponsored, I don't, I don't have any relationship with any of these companies. But if you buy it through the links in the description, it is like an affiliate link. But mostly, I'm just showing you what's in my pockets because to me, this is actually interesting. Let's go. All right, first item. Flashlight. This is my flashlight. I love it. I use it all the time. You wouldn't think that you need a flashlight every day. I bet five days a week I find some reason to use this thing. It's a 4.7s Mini XL, and I'll share my thoughts. Well, first I'll tell you how it works. Uh, it's a twist on. Uh, there's two varieties, the twist on and the sort of punch the back. In my experience, there's just fewer for sale for punch the back, although I do like those, I just don't have it. This, you twist it once and it's low. You twist it again, it's a little brighter, and you twist it again, and it's super bright. I don't know exactly what it takes to get it, like, to be blinky, but if I mess around with it enough, that'll happen, if you ever need to be rescued. Um, but I find a reason that I'm walking in the dark, I'm headed to the stable, and I don't want to step in the dog dirt. I Yesterday, my daughter wanted me to put her computer down next to her bed, and it was dark, and I had my flashlight. You just need a flashlight a lot more than you'd think. I bet you break out your phone, but that is a terrible flashlight. There are two things, to me the major decision that you make when you're buying a flashlight is whether you want it to run on a AA battery or those CR123 batteries. Um, the advantage of a AA is that you can find them. Every time you go to some you know, quickie mart next to the gas station, they're gonna have a AA battery for you, and that's cool. The advantage of the CR123, which is what this is, is that it works better. I don't know how to do this. It's a, um, it's a much brighter flashlight, this thing. The, the battery lasts longer and it shines brighter. It's better in every way except for availability, which is why people make them. So when I bought my flashlight, I was just sure to buy like a brick, whatever that is, 20 batteries or something, and I keep them in stock. And now I have a flashlight in my pocket all the time, which I need almost every day. And it's bright and it works awesome. And when it's time to replace the battery, I just grab it from the room. That's the first item that I keep in my pocket. Next up, my keychain. There's nothing too exciting about my keychain, except that it separates in two. So what I've done is I've separated the things typically that are car and not car. Because what happens to me is I'll have the car running, maybe I've got the air conditioning going, and I'll want to get in the, I don't know, the bed of the, uh, the, the toolbox in the bed. So without turning my car off, I can take this apart and do a thing. Maybe I left something inside and I need to unlock a door. I can leave the car running while I go do my thing. It just seems like it's a common use case for me to want to leave the car and then open something, and this lets me do that. I have looked at the other keychain solutions. There are some that almost look like a pocket knife, and they're really attractive to me. But to use them right, you kind of have to reorganize your key life, you know? Big keys like this don't work with that. And this thing has some sort of security sensor, battery-operated, programmable thing in it. So you can't just easily downgrade this key into a key that is one of these styles. So as cool as those things look online, I haven't made them happen for me yet. This is my just plain old regular separatable keychain because it solves a problem for me in that I can leave the car running and unlock stuff. Next up from my pocket, the pocket knife. So I've had a couple different pocket knife varieties before I settled on this Juice S2 guy. Uh, the first thing I carried was an actual pocket knife. And the issue was I felt like it was a little big and heavy. It was, it was maybe a lot longer. And um, 
It was a knife and I didn't realize how often I needed a knife. Somehow in my head, knives were just like defense weapons. But it turns out I opened boxes and blister packs, which that's what the name of those like clamshell packs for when you buy new things. And we live in an armored world and you need a knife all the darn time. So I love having this. The thing was, I'm kind of handy and it seemed like I was using my knife for a lot of things that weren't knives. You know, I was replacing switch plates and electrical sockets and tightening things here and there. And I was just taking my knife and ruining the tip of it by trying to make it something other than a knife. So that's why I got a multi-tool, which has say a Phillips head on it or three different varieties of flat head on it. This one's a fighter. There we go. So it has this sort of thing in there. It has the pliers, of course, um, and it has the knife. I don't know if I'll be able to open everything at once. It has a knife. It has this bottle opener, which I almost never use, and it has scissors which actually come in handy. You know, it's not that uncommon for me to spot like a thread on somebody's clothes or whatever and, uh, and use the scissors. Obviously, none of these tools on a multi-tool are as nice as a dedicated tool, but again, I whip out this thing every day. As a matter of fact, it seems like if I try to live with it not in my pocket for a few hours, it shows up and causes a problem. My family uses this thing. And like, I don't know, I'm just sort of the family official knife pokey device guy, you know? Colin doesn't open his chocolate milk without asking for the knife from my pocket. I don't know how I live without a knife in my pocket. I did for a long time. And now I realize like, man, I, I hardly four or five hours goes by that I don't find a use for something that I need to open or twist or manipulate in one way or another. So this is Leatherman Juice 2. I used to use the Leatherman Squirt, and uh, it's almost half the size, but I found that it was just a, a little flimsy. I mean, I did a lot with it. I mean, I opened a thousand pounds of concrete and sand with it. I did a ton, but in the end, I, I ended up asking for this for Christmas, so I've been using it eight months or so, um, because I just wanted something a little hardier. And there's an inscription on it. My wife says, you are my favorite thing. And it's meant to be this like double meaning, like I like my knife and she likes me. And anyway, this is the knife that seems to earn its way into my pocket most of the time because uh, it's been so useful. Next up is my wallet. And this is one of the ones I put the most thought into. So I'll show you what the scoop is. I started with a normal wallet like everybody else. Normally there's the bifold leather wallet or the trifold, but the thickness is a problem. The thickness is why your wallet is uncomfortable. It's why you've got spinal problems. It's, it, it's why women don't like you. I'm just kidding about that. So I moved to a money clip next and the money clip didn't really work out for me. The, the problem was it became super insensitive to the, to the varying amounts of stuff you carry. It got to me that it got to be that I could carry three 20s and my normal stuff, and that was just how much the, the clip stretched open to. Any variation on that, and I was out of luck. Either it would be so loose my things would fall out, or it would be so tight that that became my new minimum. And now I have to carry my normal stuff in four 20s, or everything is too loose and it falls out. So the money clip sucked. If you get a money clip with spring steel, that's what you need to look for in a better money clip. That'll work a little better, but I still found taking things in and out of it to be a pain in the butt. The next wallet that I messed with, um, I forget the name of it, but it was basically two pieces of plastic and a rubber band. I'll add a picture in post. It worked great at holding my cards and the different thicknesses of cards. It was okay at sliding the money under the rubber band, but my problem was taking the cards in and out of it was a real challenge. That was the hardest part. If you wanted to get a card out, you really had to like pry a corner and find a weak spot and slide it out. It held things super well, but it didn't let them go. 
And then finally, I switched over to this guy. Again, link in the description. It's made by Basics or something. And uh, here's where it goes right. What it does best is the card stuff. So this is the card I use most of the time. You just pull this guy and your card is out. You put it back and you kind of just, ah, it's making me look silly. You put it back and you kind of have to push it hard enough that the little strap slides back in. If you look at the bottom, this is the strap that's, that's making all that happen. So if you're like me, you have more than one card, but you only have one or two cards that you use frequently. And this guy does that. Next up, this card I use sometimes. And uh, it's also pretty easy to get to because it's in the front. The stuff I use less often, like insurance cards, concealed carry permits, stuff like that, they get stuffed in the back. And I'll admit, you kind of have to fish through them and find the one you want. But to me, that was true with every wallet. You know, you only take one or two things and make them really convenient. And this does that well. You've got your one or two cards that are super easy to get to. Cash. So compared to that other wallet I used, it holds the cash really securely. Rather than just slide it under a rubber band, it's really in there nicely. The only downside is you have to fold it carefully and you have to work it in. That actually went more smoothly than it does on average. Uh, on average, I feel like I'm really kind of fighting it. And if I have multiple bills, when I fold them up, they're more inclined to not be lined up like all the corners and edges. So it can be like too big or too small in one dimension. So uh, it holds your cash securely, but if you use cash a lot, then, you know, you have to kind of put it away just right. But this is my current wallet solution. Totally comfortable and totally convenient uh, for 99% of the time. Next up, phone time. So this is my iPhone. Um, I'm an iPhone guy, but iPhone, Android, you can take your pick. I was really gonna talk about the case. I have this Spigen case and it's for wireless recharging. It has been a win and a loss in different ways. What I like about it is I feel like it's just a notch below the life proof cases in terms of how protective it is. Like the, the corners, it's pretty well secured, much better than like a super cheap, just rubber case or a band, but it's not nearly as bulky as the life proof stuff. What I don't like about it is the recharging stuff. So this is actually a wireless recharging case and um, you buy a special base, you put it there overnight, and it charges without having to plug anything in. It was completely unreliable. Uh, it worked badly for like a month, and then it stopped working entirely. So I ended up just clipping off the little connector doohickey here and uh, using it as a regular case. So I guess in the description, I'll link the wireless recharging one if you're feeling lucky. And I'll link one that, that is maybe cheaper and doesn't have that silly recharging feature because for me, I quickly kind of regretted it and now I just charge it by plugging it in. But in terms of protecting the phone, it's done the job. So I'm happy about that. The last item in my pocket is by far the least used item in my pocket. This is a Ruger LCP. Uh, it was loaded. So, um, I carry the Ruger LCP mostly because of how small it is. Um, the, the first rule in gun, in gun fighting is have a gun. And um, even though, you know, if I ever had to use it, this probably isn't the first choice. Because it's so small, I feel like I'm much likely, much more likely to actually have it on me. So, um, so that's why I choose the Ruger LCP. The, everything about this gun is kind of a um, carry often, fire a little bit. Uh, I know Kyle, who's an expert in guns, really doesn't like the sights. Um, I'm about to point this at myself, but you can see that it's empty. If you look down the sights, there's hardly a bump in here. And the reason for that 
is that it's meant to live in your pocket all the time. Not catch up on things, not gather lint, not tear holes in your shorts or what. Like, this is a pocket gun and I keep it in the holster. When I buy a gun, the thing I buy right along with it at the same time is a holster. I like all my guns to live in holsters and I just feel like it's the first level of mechanical safety. Uh, if for example, you've got this gun in your pocket naked like that, who's to say that when you grab it, you don't pull the trigger or do something silly. I just, I really like the gun in a holster, uh, mostly as a trigger cover. That's, that's the big uh, reason that I like things in a holster. So, this is my gun. By being so small, it's actually in my pocket. Uh, I've met people who say, oh, they swear by 1911s, it's the only thing they want to carry. They're, they're 1911 through and through. And I say, well, do you have it on you? And, and they say, no, <laughs> it's too big, it's too heavy. It lives in the nightstand. So, um, yeah, first rule in a gunfight, have a gun. It's tiny, it's easy to carry, and um, that's why I chose this one. Not because it's amazing in any way, but because uh, in terms of loading up your pockets, it's better than most. And this represents the contents of my pockets on a normal day. Super handy. Oh, if anyone's curious if I've ever used this gun, no. I mean, I've shot it. I've put many holes in pieces of paper and stuff. The closest I've ever come to using my gun is, uh, I was, it was at night. It was a scary convenience store. There were a bunch of people kind of acting rowdy and I was comforted by the fact that it was in my pocket. That's it. Never left my pocket, never did a thing. So gunfights aren't really that common, but uh, I was happy to have it. All right, and that's today's video. Uh, if you like it, be sure to click like, subscribe, do stuff like that. I come out with videos every day, Monday through Friday, and a podcast on Saturday. Oh, and if you're interested in having any of these things, there'll be links in the description where you can find them. Multi-million dollar deals, got a million dollar deal. When I was younger, I would wonder how a million dollars feel. And for real, it feel like I ain't even broke a seal. Cause when you drop hits, they want you to pick up the bill. Now my life is in Maryland, my heart is in Chicago. New York state of mind, but out LA, man, that's where I go. When I need to lay this shit down. So much on my mind, that's the reason I'm spitting now. Finally running the game and everybody tripping now. But I could get...